Welcome to Rising Stars, where Miriam Knight, publisher of New Consciousness Review, interviews exciting new voices in the world of progressive and transformational books, films, and ideas who offer intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us as we celebrate the conscious awakening and explore many expressions of consciousness in action. Actually, our guest today, Mae McCarthy, has a star who is already high in the firmament. Mae is a best-selling author, speaker, university lecturer, and angel investor. She's been a serial entrepreneur for over 34 years and has helped to start and grow six successful companies as large as $100 million in annual revenues and serves on business, philanthropic, arts, and university boards of directors. She ascribes her success to implementing spiritual principles into her ventures. It is her passion to pass her knowledge on to others, whether as a speaker or through her best-selling book, The Path to Wealth, Seven Spiritual Steps for Financial Abundance. I am very pleased to have her with us today. Welcome, May. Oh, Miriam, thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. You know, most CEOs of multi-million dollar companies don't exactly acknowledge having an unseen member of their board. So what made you decide to write a spiritual book and talk about the universal power that has helped you in your life and in your business? Oh, gosh, where do I start? I, I had an opportunity to be invited to teach the spiritual principles that I use in my company. And, and I actually have a spiritual partner that I call the chief spiritual officer. And I named it that primarily because everyone that I surround myself with in my C-suite is a, a member of my team whose advice I value. So I have a chief financial officer that advises us on the financial health of our company and a chief information officer who advises us on the technology that, that we need to implement to keep our company current and our products um, state of the art. And so I decided that I wanted to use the all-knowing power of the universe, which whose advice I value higher than everyone else's. And I wanted to really commit to having a daily meeting with this spiritual partner to help guide and direct me, not only in business, but in all areas of my life. So I brought in the CSO and put it at the top of our org chart. And it was really fun explaining to our employees who the CSO was. <laughs> Uh, it, that that's kind of interesting because you couch it in very corporate terms. Would you think of yourself as a religious person? Um, I'm a spiritual person, and I love just about all of the organized religions, mainly because it it gets people together in community, mm -hmm. and community is a great place to be for support and for uh, friendship and having like-minded people around end up, I think, uh, attributing to a better life. But in terms of my own spiritual practice, I, I guess in a nutshell, you could say that what I do is I combine really tried and true business goal attainment practices mm -hmm. with gratitude and this knowledge that I can be guided and directed by an unseen uh, all-knowing force in the universe. And, and I'm not the only one that believes this. If you look at some very famous people, they will also say that they were guided by intuition uh, and that they use it as a success tool. Bill Gates said that often you have to rely on intuition. And Steve Jobs agreed when he advised us to actually have courage to follow our heart and intuition. And Oprah Winfrey has said that she's listened to that still small voice of intuition her whole life. And the only times that she made mistakes is when she didn't listen. You know, it's interesting when you mention Oprah Winfrey, because she's been in the news just in the last day or two for acquiring um, a 10% stake in Weight Watchers. And I heard her speak to OPB saying that Whenever she makes a decision that is does not come from the heart, 
it doesn't go well. She always uses her heart as the litmus test of whether she should go ahead with a uh, a business proposition. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, intuition, which essentially is is a term uh, that describes the messaging that we get from this all-knowing, powerful voice and force in the universe. Um, but intuition is going to show up in your heart. It'll show up in your gut. It'll show up as a, a thought, a really strong thought, or maybe even a picture in your mind of someone to contact or something to do. Um, and it can also come through other creative um, means, like other people might say something to you that you just know is the message that you were looking for, for you to take a step towards your goals. So we've sort of got two parts here. One is the belief that the universe is benevolent and has your back. And the the other is that you can, through your intuition or you have the means inside to make that dialogue, that connection of exchange of information. Um, both of these require a bit of work on your part. Right. Um, how did you come to the first part, the belief that the universe actually is benevolent and wants, wants your good? You know, I had an opportunity to to grow up in a, a pretty pretty great family. I'm the last of 10 kids and I was raised in Hawaii and there's a, a lot of spirituality in the Hawaiian islands. And I could see how this creative force in the universe, which I called God at that time, um, could provide. I mean, there was, there was so much abundance. If we needed food, food was available. If we needed clothing, clothing was available. Uh, if we needed all of the right conditions from Mother Nature, it was always available. So I, I knew that we have a very, very generous and creative universe that supplies whatever we want. And what I found was that I could really focus on what I wanted the outcome of a goal to be, and I would receive that or something better. So I, I just sort of fell on that when I was asked to pray. Um, in our family, we were raised Catholic, and so we prayed a lot and went to <laughs> church and all the holy days and things like that. And and when I would hear prayers that would pray the problem, it just didn't make sense to me. Um, so I changed all my prayers to pray the outcome that I wanted to have. So instead of praying that, that um, for... Uh, a great example is when I had a business at 19 years old, I had a uh, employee that was a real challenging employee. And so my prayer started out, having been trained to pray the problem, that I hoped that this employee wouldn't do so much damage. And consequently, I kept getting an employee that did damage. And as soon as I recognized that I was doing that, I started praying that this employee and all employees that work for our company are for our highest and best good. And any employees that are not for our highest and best good would find their good elsewhere. And it was only within about three days of starting that prayer that that employee gave her notice and got a different job and is very happy today. <laughs> Two things kind of slipped by, quick, slipped by quickly. One was that you started your first business at 19. Well, actually, I started my first one at six. <laughs> <laughs> but my first uh, of six adult businesses, I started at 19, yeah. Uh, wow. Um, and the, the, the second is that you recognize this principle of positive prayer, which recently in the past 10 years has become uh, widespread, but was not widely known at the time. So you got it from your own intuition, which makes me believe that you've always been pretty well tapped into the universal source. Well, I really, really have always had a really special relationship with what I would call God or, or this all-knowing creative power in the universe. That which created me and everything else that ever has been, is, and will be. Um, we, we're part of that creative intelligence. And I just, for some reason, always had this idea that it wanted 
my highest and best good. Um, I, it never occurred to me that it would want anything um, bad for me. Um, so I, I'm, I guess I, I got that hit or that understanding really, really young. I wonder how much of that is the result of growing up in paradise, in, in a place like Hawaii where um, the, the environment is benevolent as opposed to, say, in, in an inner city um, with all of its dangers and tensions. Um, it could be. Um, it could be. I mean, we certainly took risks that were uh, life-threatening daily when we'd go out surfing or or um, other water sports or climbing and hiking and things like that. I mean, when you're a kid, you're immortal, right? Mm -hmm. You just take all sorts of risks. But I always felt that there was, in the in the Catholic tradition, it, you might term it as a guardian angel, but I always felt that there was, was something um, spiritual that was always, always going to guide and direct me towards the things that I wanted and to give me some warnings to keep me safe. That's wonderful. What was your first business? Oh, my very first business when I was six. Um, I grew up in a family that demonstrated service a lot. My dad was a surgeon and my mom was a nurse, but of course we had 10 kids in our family, so mom was mom primarily. And what I saw my dad and my mother do was give out a lot. So if my dad would, he built a couple of office buildings in our town and invited doctors to come and reside there so that we could have health care on our side of the island. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of doctors and we didn't even have a hospital at that time. So he was very instrumental in bringing health care to our side of the island. And for those physicians that just didn't have enough business yet, he would give them free rent. Wow. And when, yeah, and when he had, and he'd help try and build their business with what them. What a wonderful man. Yeah, and, and when he had... Well, we're, we're going to have to take a break now, May, but we will be back very shortly. We're speaking with May McCarthy, and her book is all about the seven spiritual steps for financial abundance, the path to... The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. If you've ever said, I do, I do want it all. I do want happiness. I do want love. And I do desire the happily ever after fairy tale life. Then this show is for you. Join me, Dean Nicole Brandon, for my internationally acclaimed show, Bridal Talk Radio, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time, where I'll bring you the top experts in the fields of communication, money, relationships, finance, pleasure, play, travel, sexuality, parenting, real estate, adventure, comfort, care, passion, and love. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffee and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleashed, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleashed, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Speaking with May McCarthy, the author of The Path to Wealth. May, what is your website? MayMcCarthy.com. That's M C C, right? Correct. So it's M A Y M C C A R T H Y.com. Great. 
Now, May, you sounded like you had a, an almost idyllic upbringing and a wonderful family. And yet I've heard of people who have had the exact opposite and still ended up very successful people. So there is something uh, in the makeup of the individual. D- did you have a sense that you had a destiny to fulfill? I, I didn't. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I really didn't. I, I used goal attainment practices and proved over and over and over again that whatever I put my attention on, whatever I use my words, my thoughts, and I, my emotions towards, I would always get. And that still happens today. And that's basically what the book is teaching is, is that everyone can do this. If we spend more time focusing on what we want as the outcome of the goal, I mean, actually seeing yourself and feeling yourself and talking about and, and believing that you can have that outcome, that realized goal, then everything's going to line up to point you in the direction to make that statement true. So when you have a goal attainment statement like, um, you know, I, I want to get out of debt, um, that statement is actually going to keep you in debt because the idea of wanting to get out of debt, you're focusing so much of your attention on this idea of debt. So a better goal attainment statement would be, I'm so grateful that I'm financially free with more than enough money or X number of dollars, a minimum of X number of dollars to afford all of my living, giving and entertainment expenses and more. I feel free and happy. So that, that kind of, of practice, that, that describing the outcome of the goal that you want, the realized goal is really key to attaining goals. And that's one of the things that I teach in the book. It's kind of fake it till you make it? Well, you're not really faking it because I think in a scientific realm, what the psychologists and different scientists that have studied this will tell you is that your subconscious does play a role in trying to help you notice possibilities to make statements true. So you're, you've, you're in this world where there is so much data. We are constantly having information uh, barrage us all day long. And what this goal attainment practice does is help you to notice the data or the messages or the opportunities that will point you towards making your goal attainment statements true. Um, for instance, uh, I, I travel an awful lot. <laughs> I mean, I, I travel a lot. And I have a routine when I land in a new city where I get my rent a car and I go to my hotel and drop off my bags and then go to a grocery store that's really close by to get water and supplies. Well, on one trip to Cleveland, one of my goal attainment statements had been that we are uh, now receiving a minimum of $400,000 in sales revenue during this particular period. Well, I was in Cleveland and I'm sitting there in my car ready to go to the grocery store that's five minutes away and I got this really strong thought to go to a different grocery store that's about 15 minutes away. Well, that didn't make any sense and my rational mind started to try and talk me out of it and it said things like, you know, it's nine o'clock at night, Um, Your appointment is at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Don't waste the extra time. 8 o'clock in the morning is really 5 o'clock in the morning Seattle time, so you'll be too tired. You won't be fresh. It makes no sense to take the drive. So I just said, stop. I honestly just told my rational mind, stop. And then I said, CSO, I need another lead. If this message is from you, make me feel confident on taking the drive. If it's not from you, I'll just go to the grocery store close by. Well, sure enough, I felt this real sense of knowing that I should take the drive, and my intuitive mind started kicking in. Well, it's only 20 extra minutes, and who knows, maybe if you get to the grocery store, all of these things that you want will be on sale, so it'll be worth the drive. So my intuitive mind is actually trying to talk me into it. (laughs) 
So I took the drive. As I'm walking into the grocery store, a gentleman was walking out, and it was someone that I had met six months before at a trade show. He was a potential customer that was not returning any of my phone calls to schedule an appointment. So we recognized each other, had a conversation, and he he invited me while I was in town to come make a presentation to their group. That led to another presentation, and we were able to secure a contract for over half a million dollars in the time period that I wanted. Now, when you establish a goal in business, you generally will try and figure out every single step that it takes to achieve that goal. But I'm telling you, stop that. Leave the path to get to the goal up to this unseen, all-knowing, intelligent partner. And what you'll find is that the paths that you are led on are miraculous. Really, you're, who would have thought driving to a grocery store at 9 o'clock at night would earn me an invitation to make a presentation? Yeah. I would have never, ever put that down as a step to take. But that's the way intuition works. That's the way that this intelligent partner works. And I have countless numbers of stories like that in the book. You do. You do. They're fascinating. So tell us about some of the seven steps. Sure. Um, the first four occur in the morning. And what you'll want to do is have a place within your home that is your meeting place. This is where you're going to have a meeting with your spiritual partner and your roles and responsibilities are very clear. Your job is to figure out what it is that you want and describe it with gratitude as though you've already attained it. Your spiritual partner's job is to create the path to get there and to give you these intuitive leads one step at a time along the path to get there. You follow the leads or ask for another lead if you're unsure. Eventually, you take the step and you get there. So the very first thing that you do as part of your morning meeting is to read something for five minutes that puts you in a uh, spiritually receptive mood. I like authors that have stories about ordinary common people having extraordinary experiences Um, One of my very, very favorite books was published in 1925 um, and written by a woman named Florence Scovel Shin. And the name of the book is called The Game of Life. But I do list in the back of my book some suggested reading for this part of the practice. So you'll spend about five minutes as step one reading something to put you in a receptive mood. The second step takes about 10 minutes, and you will write out a gratitude letter to your spiritual partner, describing everything that you're grateful for and everything that you want as though you've already received it. So again, instead of saying, um, I want to lose 10 pounds, you would say, I'm so grateful that I am physically fit and trim, toned and energetic in a healthy, pain-free body that's easily able to hike and walk with my family and friends. Or if you Uh, If your goal is money, I'm so grateful that I now have a minimum of X number of dollars and that I'm using my remarkable skills and talents in exciting ways to support the company I work for and to feel supported and provided for. So you'll use words that describe the outcome. Then for the next five minutes is step three. You'll read that letter out loud with emotion and every single school teacher will tell you that when you read out loud, It anchors it more deeply within you. Now, this is the part where you're programming your subconscious to help you along with intuition. And what I mean by that is when you read it out loud, you're keeping those goals at the forefront of your thoughts, which will help you to notice more possibilities all day long to make those statements true and to take steps towards their achievement. And then finally, As the fourth step, you'll close your eyes and spend up to five minutes doing something that professional and Olympic athletes have done since the beginning of competition. And what they do is they see themselves in the completed goal. If you talk to a professional athlete or professional musician, many of them set aside time every single day to do what they call mental training. They see themselves setting up for the shot, 
Um, they'll see themselves on the court or on the course or on the stage using their talents, um, shooting the ball or, or hitting the ball or, or running the race and winning. So you'll spend up to five minutes seeing yourself in that realized goal, which of course brings in all of your thoughts and your emotions into this process. And that's it for the morning practice. Then as the fifth and sixth step, you're out in the day all day long and you're having this, this conversation with your CSO. You're, you're, you're seeing a lead or, or thinking about something really strongly and you're talking to your CSO saying, look, is this from you? Am I supposed to do something here? Is this a, a step I'm supposed to take? And as you develop this relationship, you'll begin to discern and notice the voice of your spiritual partner much more often. You'll notice when that gut instinct is, is being directed by the CSO. And then at the end of the night, the seventh step is to get rid of anything that's taking up room within you that could be replaced with more of the good things that you want. And this is when you just say a blanket prayer that's written in the book that essentially releases anything that is not serving you, that's taking up room. Because once you give up anger or resentment or jealousy or hurt or pain or, or fear or doubts, when you give that up, you're making room within yourself to receive more of the good things that you want. And you deserve them. And those are your seven steps. <laughs> wow. Let me ask you, May, I happen to have right next to me on the table The Complete Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scoville Shin. Does your mentioning it mean that I should bring it to the top of the pile and actually make that my next book to review, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the universe is giving me a message. We're speaking with Mae McCarthy, author of The Path to Wealth. Stay with us. We will be right back after these messages. <coughs> Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. The name is Bond. James Bond. No, the name is Joe. The Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Old Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on OldTimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. you've been searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream, check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pascual and Diana Gold Holland on Share International Radio for thought-provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. 
McCarthy speaking about the path to wealth. May, the core of your recommended practice is asking for what it is, no, visualizing what you want and verbalizing what it is that you really want in your life. Now, so many of us actually have great difficulty because we're kind of distracted or we just don't have a big enough vision. We just want to survive. How do you recommend that people go about actually focusing in for themselves on what they really want, their soul's desire? Well, I I ask people to do a little exercise. Um, and, And I'll give you an example. One woman that was in one of my workshops had said that her goal was to be spiritually creative. And I asked her what that meant if she could imagine herself laying in bed at night, grinning ear to ear, knowing that she had realized her goal, what what would have happened in order for her to say, yes, I am now spiritually creative? And we came back to her later in the workshop, and what she described was that being spiritually creative meant that she had her artwork hanging in 15 different locations, and it was for sale. And that she had her art on note cards and T-shirts and that she was selling her art in a number of different vehicles to earn a minimum of $3,000 a month. And what I said was that that's what you want to write down. I am so grateful that I am now displaying my art in a minimum of 15 locations and that I also sell note cards and t-shirts and earn a minimum of $3,000 per month. And that people contact me every week and say that uh, they've seen my art and now they feel inspired to create art of their own. So that realized goal is what you want to describe with gratitude. And what will happen is your subconscious and this source of intuition will start to help you to notice more possibilities to make those statements true. Your subconscious freaks out when you start saying that you now have this. I am so grateful that I have this and you actually don't. Your subconscious is going to start going into overdrive to help you notice possibilities to make those statements true. So being aware is also a big part of this. Actually, Um, allowing the universe to help you and um, trusting that it is there for you. That's a big one. Trust is a big one. It's very important. And that's one of the reasons why I ask people to set aside the 25 to 30 minutes in the morning, every morning. This is, this is a consistency that successful people use in all areas of life, whether you're a professional athlete, whether you're a professional business person, if you look at a successful person who accomplishes goals, what you'll see is an element of consistency and discipline. And rather than try and dream that up on your own, I've given people a really simple and easy formula that if they just do it, the understanding will follow. And it actually gets to be really fun. What I find, and and most of the feedback that I get from workshop attendees or people who have read the book and put the practice into place, is that they feel this this lightness um, because they don't have to do all the work themselves anymore. Their only job is to figure out what it is that they want, be grateful for it in advance, follow directions on paths that are created by their spiritual partner, and they achieve their goals. It's a whole lot less work when you have a spiritual partner that will do the heavy lifting for you. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes we get intimidated uh, praying to God as this very remote uh overwhelming divinity figure. So having somebody on your board is a really much more intimate thing. And you can get really quite demanding of your your CSO because you are the CEO. Right, exactly. But also, and people, I ask people to choose their own name. The important thing is, I want them to think of it like this. Um, 
one of the most successful people in the world is a guy who lives here in in the Northwest, and his name is Bill Gates. Everybody probably recognizes his name. He's the most wealthy person on the Forbes list again this year. Well, imagine this. If Bill Gates called you up and said, look, I'll meet with you every single day for a half an hour, and in that meeting, I want you to describe the goals as though they've already been realized that you want. And then what I'll do is throughout the day, I'll, I'll let you know what steps you can take in order to achieve those goals. And you take the steps and then you can achieve your goals. Does that sound fair enough? Will you meet with me every day? Well, if you ask anyone that, the answer is going to be yes, of course. The, the richest man in the world, the most successful man in the world is going to meet with me every day and give me advice. Oh my gosh, I'll take it. Well, what I want people to do is treat this morning meeting just like that. But here's the best part. You have an even more knowledgeable, more creative, and all-knowing power of the universe that knows even more than Bill Gates does. In fact, that all-knowing power of the universe actually created Bill Gates and helps Bill Gates achieve his goals. So... If you treat it seriously, that you are partnering with infinite intelligence that can create paths that really seem miraculous. I mean, who would have thought going to a grocery store at 9 o'clock at night would earn us a half a million dollar contract? To me, that's a miracle. But miracles turn into typicals and happen like that all the time because spirit... (laughs) Spirit just creates these paths that we would never, ever imagine. And all we have to do is follow the steps to get to our goals. And it really ends up being very, very fun. It sounds like fun. I I have to admit that um, I read the book, uh, started reading the book about a month ago, and have been putting it into practice, and I can I can attest to my own uh, few miracles. So um, uh, this this is uh, wor- very worthwhile doing. Uh, I'm I'm very impressed. I I still find myself having to get out of my way. Um, now, you you say that there are ways to specific things that you can do to kind of jumpstart the process. Um, what are some of these ways, May? Oh, jump! There's a, a chapter in the book that I call "Jumpstart Your Good," and one of the things that I tell people to do is whatever it is that they want to receive, start giving some symbol of that now. For instance, if somebody wants to have Uh, better health, you know, perfect health, perfect and right health, then um, cook a a healthy meal and invite somebody over to enjoy it. Um, Or uh, invite your neighbor to go for a walk. Let's say you want more time. You know, a lot of us are just like, oh my gosh, there's not enough time in the day to get everything done. Well, if you feel like you have so little time available, I bet there's probably one person you can think of that is equally as busy as you are. Maybe you could call them up and, and, and ask them, you know, what you can do to give them 20 minutes of free time. If it's, if it's money that you want, um, giving money, even though you might feel that you don't have anything to give, even a small symbol of giving first does start the flow of the same being returned to your life. I told you earlier in the show about how I was raised where my dad would give out free care to patients who couldn't afford to pay him money. And he kept reminding them, you are a valuable person. You have something of value. And you may not know what that is today, but someday you're going to recognize it. And you can then pay me back in that kind of value. We'll have a fair exchange of value then. And sure enough, by the time we got to the end of the year, we recognized how much free food, free clothing, free this, free that, that we got to support our family that was way more than what my dad would have received if he had gotten money alone. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that you want, start giving that first and it will begin the flow back into your life sooner. 
It's kind of like priming the pump. It is. And I love one of my favorite experiments is to take a vase of water and you get a hose that's kind of like a siphoning hose Mm -hmm. and take a smaller uh, vase of colored water and you will pour that water through the tube into the larger vase and as it hits that larger vase of water, it, it, it turns around and starts flowing back out into the smaller vase in an even greater quantity. So every time I've given first, I've always received more in return. And I think that that's just a law in the universe. And I would love for your listeners to test that out. Well, I would love to hear from the listeners who have tested that out, or the listeners can communicate with you. Let's have your website again, May. It's MayMcCarthy.com. That's M-A-Y-M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y.com. And there's also a little 90-second video that talks a little bit about the book as well. Great. So, you know, one of the aspects of the book that I particularly enjoyed was the the description that you gave of how to talk to your CFO, because most of us don't really know what to say. You know, you're, you have a blank sheet of paper in front of you. Um, so what do you ask for? How do you know what to ask for? Yeah, you know, I'm a big believer in having goals or things that you want in all of the major areas of your life. So some of mine are that I am physically fit and trim, toned and healthy in a pain-free body. So with every cell in my body operating as it's designed. So that would be my, my goal for health. And for finances, I actually choose dollar amounts. Um, so I'm so grateful that I'm fully supported and provided for and I'm financially free with a minimum of X number of dollars. Um, And then also in relationships, right relationships, and in every area of your life, you should have goals. Absolutely, goals. Well, we will pick this up right after these messages. We're speaking with Mae McCarthy on The Path to Wealth. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicers, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. If you remember living fearlessly, joyfully, and in a world filled with adventure, happiness, pleasure, and unbridled living, then this show is for you. Join me, Dame Nicole Brandon, as I bring you the world's top experts in wealth, creativity, flow, seat edging technology, space, wellness, health, love, lust, and passion, all merging together each week here at the Hub of Happiness. Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Passionate Living where you can ride on the magic carpet ride of living and learn how to lead a passionately wild, exciting, and outrageously amazing life. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. And we are back with Mae McCarthy, author of The Path to Wealth, Seven Spiritual Steps for Financial Abundance. 
May, one of the uh, important aspects of making this process work is recognizing your intuition, developing it. Were there steps that you took to develop your own intuition? Um, not really. What I did was I started changing my words, thoughts, and emotions to focus more on the outcome that I wanted rather than being vague and also rather than looking at things that I didn't want. I spend more than half of my time every day focusing on the outcome of what I want to achieve. And what I noticed is that these intuitive signs or, or leads or messages would show up more often and in a more obvious way. But when I first started this, I will be honest with you, there were a lot more um, questions for my CSO. Um, I, would, I would get a thought um, or an intuitive hit, a gut instinct, or a, um, someone would say something, and I would actually stop and say, CSO, is this from you? If it is, I need another sign. I need another lead. I, and so I said that a lot more often, you know, years ago uh, than I do now because I recognize the CSO's way of communicating with me now because I, I spend time with it every single day. But back then when I was first starting, I had to stop and, and ask, is this from you? And if so, I need a more obvious and clear sign. Mm-hmm. And I got them. It, it, I guess it's like anything. Any person that you work with, uh, you get to know their style and you, you get to develop a much freer and easier communication. That's exactly right. And I think what, what most people do um, and what we're trained to do is that if something doesn't make sense, we just disregard it. And so what I ask people to do is to stop doing nothing. Just stop it. And instead, say, I need another lead. I don't mm -hmm. know if this is from you, CSO, but I need another lead if it is. And then you'll get one. That's an important point because when people get discouraged, you know, you kind of lose all of the air from your tires and you, you get deflated and you get uh, depressed and you um, come to a stop and getting that forward motion is that much harder if you just keep on in that um, doing mode then it's much easier to turn right or left uh, ask for another signal and then just keep on going exactly um, I have a, a guy who I know who had to move out of his house to live closer to where he worked but he didn't want to sell his house. He wanted to just rent it out. And everyone, everyone that he talked to told him that the market was awful. There was no way he was going to get a renter. It was going to be really difficult. And really tried to discourage him and showed him all sorts of data showing how horrible the market was and that he was going to have a difficult time. Well, he decided that, that he didn't want to have that experience. So he used the practice to describe having the perfect renters really easily show up where he didn't, you know, he just, it was just so simple and easy. And he thanked his CSO for this realized goal every single morning. Well, about within a week, he got this really strong thought to contact a neighbor on his street who he didn't talk to very often, but he got this really strong thought to contact this neighbor. So he did. And during the conversation with this neighbor, the neighbor complained that there were no rentals on their street because he had some friends that were moving from another state and really wanted to live on their street. Well, guess what? <laughs> exactly. So he didn't have to place an advertisement. He didn't have a difficult time. And they wanted to sign a lease for three years. Wow. I, and that's, that's how, I mean, that to anyone else would be a miracle, but this practice turns miracles into typicals. I know somewhere in the book, you said that, um, every so often you'd get tired of this practice and then you'd slough off and, mm -hmm. uh, you'd pay the price afterwards. 
Yeah, what ends up happening is things go along and you're just riding this wonderful high of everything being so easy and life starts to get in the way since there's no crisis or or demanding, you know, need for anything. Um you get lazy. And and usually that happens when everything's going well and I happened to have a business at that particular time that required me to be up at all sorts of hours because we had a lot of international clients. And so I skipped a day here, skipped a day there, skipped a couple days here, and lo and behold, when a crisis showed up, um I w- I didn't have a strong enough foundation to not go into a tailspin and a spiral down into despair. I mean, this was a really significant problem that that really could have ended our company. and i got caught up in the drama and i was really really scared and it was only at the point of pure exhaustion um that i finally surrendered and and got back onto the horse and started doing the practice and describing what i wanted the outcome to be as the solution for the problem which was that it dissolve and dissipate and that everyone everyone is able to experience their highest and best good in it and of course there was a quite a bit more detail but what ended up happening was an even better solution than i could have ever imagined as soon as i got out of the way and let my cso create the path to get to my goal but here's the part that if if you don't write down in the morning practice and describe the completed goal the cso has a really difficult time showing up to point you in the right direction and in the example i just gave you when you're so filled with fear and doubt and you're and you're scared and or maybe angry or upset i want you to think about the last time that you were angry if if somebody had come up to you and started to have a conversation with you in the midst of you being really angry or really scared you probably wouldn't be able to hear them you mm-hmm. you'd be so consumed with your anger or your fear that you wouldn't be able to hear them well the same is true in this practice if you're in that state of anger or resentment or jealousy or pain or fear it's really hard for the cso's messages to come through so in the book i describe some ways to eliminate those kinds of fears so that you can receive and and see and understand the messages that the cso is trying to send to you that's what i like about it it is such a grounded practical book i mean by from someone who has been through life who really understands um all of the challenges that we face as human beings you know it, it's not um this wonderful successful person who is in uh, an ivory tower <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> It's a wonderful successful person who has been through the wars. <laughs> yes. And you know life happens. We we don't we don't know because we live in a in a collective consciousness there's going to be things that happen that we don't expect. But here's the best part of this practice is you don't have to go on those emotional roller coaster rides anymore. Um what you can do is is look at any situation that presents itself anywhere in the world and go hmm Okay. Well, that that it that's too bad that that happened. But what do I want as the outcome? What I want for the outcome is, you know, peace and 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 health and and love and you can use this practice not only for your own personal goals but for the world. You can describe the world you want to live in and really hold consciousness now what your subconscious is going to do is help you to recognize things that are happening that are proving that your goal is being realized so i know i have a friend of mine who's very political and she complains a lot about the government but i don't ever see any of the stuff that she's complaining about My my subconscious and intuition helps me to see what I'm what my goal is which is that we have a fair government that's working together to support 
are people. You do tend to perceive what it is that you're looking for. Exactly. So my goal is that everyone spend more of their time, 51% or more of their time focusing on what they want and not on what they don't want because whatever they put their attention on, they're going to see more evidence that that's happening. So do you have a real kind of image of what your CSO is like? A real image. I mean, it uh, is, I, is... I don't see it as separate. Um, I, I'm a... I'm, kind of like your higher self? It, it is. It's an it's a inner, inner wisdom. Um, in, my, in my religious tradition or what I practice as a spiritual practice, um, I believe that, um, you know, we're all part of one uh, collective consciousness. We're all part of one uh, spiritual being. And, but we can name different characteristics of it as love or intelligence or intuition. Well, we are going to have to leave it there. We have been speaking with Mary May McCarthy, the author of The Path to Wealth. May, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, Miriam, thank you. And please join us next week. And in the meantime, visit New Consciousness Review on the web, ncreview.com. Many blessings. Goodbye.